How does one go from this to this? Or from this to this? Real people, real transformations. Amazing life-changing results are achieved every day at O Skin Med Spa. Let Miss O show you the way. Your very own before and after experience awaits. Call now for a free consultation. Visit oskinmedspa.com for more details. It's another Thursday night. It is time for Who is SoCal? Or now it's called Who Are We? Because we have a special guest from the Philippines and we also have a special guest from the Bay Area. And tonight we're going to be doing something very, very special. This is kind of like the who's who of the advocates for Filipino culture, if you will. Um, and so we have, yeah, oh my gosh, we have a really amazing and um yeah uh, amazing lineup for tonight um and so before anything i would like to thank our sponsors um we have miss olivia keto co of o skin care and medspa who's been supporting us since day one and also we have raffles this evening we have three raffles from um the hi-fi hedgehog their sun-kissed pinai and there's also bodhi's light um and I also wanted to thank our community partners, the Filipino American Chamber of Commerce of Hollywood, um, who support that supports um, our, our artist community and also Phil M Arts, um, which advocates for artists and arts practitioners alike and um, uh, the preservation of Philippine arts and cultures. Um, and so let's start with the evening. I think I'm all alone today, Kuya Ed's not here, and Arvin's in the backstage. Um, but so let's call on our first guest. Our first guest is no other than um, Anton Diaz. Um, and we're talking about our awesome planet from the Philippines. And my gosh, I mean, you know, like they've been around for years since 2005. Um, and he's the leading food and travel vlogger in the Philippines, and he's grown it to a multimedia company, if you will. And um, yes, he is. Um, he has thousands of followers and readers, and he is still organically growing. And his advocacy is to promote food and travel secrets of a destination and also to inspire Filipinos to live an awesome life in Christ. So let's all welcome 
Anton Diaz. So everybody, hashtag Anton and show your clapping emojis. Hi, hello, Anton. Hello. How, how is my long lost cousin? Hello. Yes. I, mean, I haven't seen you in a long time. It must yeah. be three years already. Yes, been a while. How are you? Hello. Good evening to all the people watching on the live stream and watching on the replay. Yes. And um, so to everyone watching, we are on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Kumu. So hello to yeah. everyone who's watching on Kumu um, in the Philippines. Hello. Yes. yes. Um, and yes, how are you doing? Um, so Manila is uh, at least uh, going back, uh, reopening again. Um, we're doing at least moving forward with vaccinations uh, for the A4 group. So I think um, more and more um, people are optimistic. Um, but uh, of course, the food and travel industry, especially tourism in Manila, has been really affected. And but you know um, we have a lot of good news you know all around the world not only in Manila you know a lot of um, we're actually excited like um, like in Singapore you know one of the uh, one one of the Filipina won the female chef of the year in the World Gourmet Awards and then we have a friend actually his her name is Dede De La Fuente known as the Lechon Diva. Opening in Resorts World Las Vegas. So I mean, oh, wow. um, uh, in uh, in two weeks' time. So you know, it's nice. Uh, I think uh, a lot of um, people are starting to appreciate um, the Filipino culture, and I believe you know after this pandemic, you know, we will have a more you know solid effort, not only from from people in Manila, but all, not only from the U.S., but all around the world, no? the diaspora of Filipinos to really promote our, our culture and be proud of it, of course. That is so true. And um, so we have another um, promoter of Philippine arts and cultures. Um, we have Dr. Lily Ann Villa Raza. Um, she's the chair of Philippine studies at the City College of San Francisco in the Bay Area. And she holds a PhD in history from the Northern Illinois University with specializations in Southeast Asian history, Philippine history, US immigration history, and race and ethnicity. So that's all welcome. Dr. Lily Villaraza. How are you doing? I think you're muted. Um, yeah, you're muted. Zoom issue. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> hey, everybody. Nice to see you. Thank you for having me. This is very interesting. Actually, yes, I haven't ever done yes. this before. So. I am so excited yeah. for this <laughs> evening. So how is the Bay Area? Um, it's cold. Um, it's, you know, it's, thankfully the last couple of days haven't been very foggy. So um, I actually had some friends from Chicago enjoying the, the nice weather out here. But, um, you know, it's... We're getting back into, you know, um, being in full, you know, everybody being able to get back together again because folks have been vaccinated and everything. So the state's opening up. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, school's over. We just actually had our first statewide Filipino, a uh, Phil grad um, for the community college system students across the state. Um, the attorney general of the state of California was our keynote. It was wonderful. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to, to share some of that with you as well. <laughs> that is so awesome. And I was a longtime Bay Area resident also. Um, so I'm really, really excited. Um, and let's call in our next guest, um, Mr. Joel Jacinto. He's the co-founder and program director of Kayamanan ng Lahi. And um, it's an organization dedicated to inspiring transformation through cultural understanding and artistic expression so that we empower ourselves, our families, and communities, and enrich society. So let's all welcome Mr. Joel Jacinto. Hi, Joel. How are you doing? How's it, Mick? How's it, Anton and Dr. Lillian? Mabuhay to you all. Yes, mabuhay to everybody. And um, can you tell us a little bit what you've been um, doing lately, Joel? Yeah, you know, um, Mick, um, and thank you for doing this. Thank you for convening us, Mick. You have excellent organizing skills, so you must have went to a really great university, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Bruins. go Bruins. <laughs> go Bruins. We just had to do that. Um, we, what we has been going to. on? We just had to. Uh, you know, um, uh, 
Mick, I'm blessed, totally blessed to be with Kayamana Nanglahi, the, the organization I co-founded together with uh, Barbara Ele and Ave Jacinto. And uh, for 30 years, almost 31 years, this has been our lives of ser service and stewardship. Um, and so what we've been doing is trying to survive and thrive through the pandemic to keep connected so that we can continue to serve our members, our participants from our Pamana, our children, all the way to Yumanga Magulang. And we've been able to do that. And now we're starting to get back in person. So we're really, in this Awa Nang Jos, we're so grateful that everybody's coming through and, and, but you know, it's been with great trauma. So we've experienced a lot of trauma in our lives and just for everybody who has experienced trauma in our community, uh, blessings and, and, and love to you all because it's been tough. We have to recognize that. And so our culture is our medicine. Our culture helps us to move forward, mm -hmm. especially our food. So Anton Salamat for what you do and Dr. Lilian for the, for the, um, you know, for the, the frames and the messaging and the, and the things that we've done in the past in terms of uh, of cultural programming and how that can empower and enrich ourselves, right? So our mission totally is to enrich society by being Filipino, Filipinex, Filipina. Yes, and and food and the arts definitely help in the healing of everybody, right? Yeah, I'll just remind you, just a quick one, the quincentennial, right? This, this year, what did the Filipinos say to the starving Spanish when they came? Well, the first thing they said probably is, um, you know, you're tired, you're hungry, let's feed you. What humanity is that? What pagkiki pagkapwa is that? Yes, and it, that's something that has stuck with us um, culturally as a people, right? Because it's the first thing that you ask when you see someone, kumain ka na, did you eat, right? Diba? <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of eating, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, we're going to be eating really soon. Yeah, I could see that. Um, so our next guest is no other than Giselle Tonji Walters, who's the executive director of Film Arts. And she has been long active in the entertainment industry with over two decades of TV experience in both the Asian American market. And she is a recent graduate of the Antioch University from her master's degree in nonprofit management, and she currently serves as the executive director of Film Arts. She is an actor, producer, and host of community events and programming in the Filipino American community. So let's all welcome Giselle Tonji Walters. So hashtag Giselle, everybody. Hi, everyone. Hi, hi, G. How are you doing? I'm so honored to be in this panel. I'm so Adam excited Wong, to have you, <laughs> Dr. Lily, Kat Joel. How do how do I how do I follow up with these amazing people? You know, this is like this is like um like probably a quarter of like the who's who of you know advocates for Filipino arts and cultures, right? Like we so we're funny. only barely scratching the surface. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's a saying that I learned when I was growing up, kilig to the bones. I'm so kilig. <laughs> <laughs> Thank yes. you. For, uh, and, speaking of, and speaking of kilig, ito na, we're all going to be kilig with our next guest. Do you have a clue who he is? And so our next guest is no other than Kirby Araulio. And he's a historian and renowned Filipino culture bearer. And he's been a content creator um, who has amassed a huge following on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram and all the social media you could ever think of. Um, he is currently the National Coordinator for Culture and Heritage for the National Alliance of Filipino Concerns, that's NAFCON. And he is well rooted in his culture and passionate about his heritage. Um, and he comes from a line of kings and rulers, and he is a Datu and a Lakan by blood, but an artist, scholar, activist at heart. So let's all welcome Kirby. Hashtag Kirby, everybody. Marani Hi, Salama. Kirby. I'm not on mute, right? Yeah, okay. No, you're I'm not. <laughs> Just making sure. Yeah. yeah. I'm so we are Kirby all killing. You have Kirby on feeling, the show. <laughs> I'm also feeling killing <laughs> with everyone here. <laughs> So how's everybody? How's everything going with you, Kirby? I've uh, been busy trying to finish my second and third coloring book because I started the coloring book series. Um, the first one was about um, the Luzones, my ancestors, 
uh, pre-colonial zonas, and then the second one was about or is about um, Southeast Asian women. So the fierce uh, pre-colonial women in Southeast Asia, because you know we have a lot of amazing real life rayas in uh, in our history. So that's the second one. The third one is about the discovery of the Philippines, so the so-called discovery, since it's the quincentennial this year. That is so awesome. I always look forward to your videos you. and like the really cool illustrations. They're so cute. It makes it so much more relatable. You know, they're, they're almost like nandroids. <laughs> yeah. You know, like the, the um, illustration. Um, yeah, so um, speaking of, like we were talking about food earlier and how it heals us, right? And so our next guest is also a Filipino culture bearer and bearer of food because she's no other than the owner and baker of Calajo Catering, Jennifer Avencena. And she is a proud Ibaloy Igorot Filipinex American, and she has been a member of BBAC Los Angeles, an organization formed in 1960 as a community and social support group to recent immigrants in South and Southern California. And she is also fortunate to be raised by her grandmother, Rose, who practices Ibaloy traditions and beliefs. And a lot of that is actually manifested through what they do in Calajo Catering, where Ube is our yam. So let's all welcome Jennifer Avancenia. Hi, Jennifer. Hello. Welcome thank you, back. Thank you. thank you so much for having me. I'm truly, truly honored to be with all of you here. Thank you so much. Yes, we are so excited because not are we only going to talk about food, of course, like well, everyone loves subject. food, right? <laughs> yes, our favorite subject. But we're also going to talk about what everyone is so passionate about, right? And that's the arts and cultures and the preservation of Philippine history, right? Yes, indeed. Yes. And so I do have a question for everybody since we've been on the topic of food. What is your favorite food? Ooh. So anybody, let's start Mine? with lechon. Of course, uh, for me, um, of course, the lechon. No? Uh, and <laughs> can keep talking about the best lechon is pepitas lechon. And of course, halo halo for me. That's always our uh, <laughs> comfort food, especially during this pandemic and uh, <laughs> the quarantine season. And um, how about Dr. Lily, Lillian? I cheat. Um, I love <laughs> chocolate. I love, love, yeah. love chocolate. Um, but I also le like leche flan. So, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like sweets. That is so cool. Same. Yeah. Like that's Same. like comfort food, right? And Joel, you got to have some of, favorites. <laughs> speaking of comfort food, my mother's mongo. Mamacito's mm. mongo. And she used to do the, 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 mm -hmm. um, wow. the shrimp. Diba? With dai. Oh, oh so yes, mongo. Coming home, diba? Mongo and dai. Comfort and uh, wow. it's Friday here. Usually, mongo is Friday dish. <laughs> Friday lunch. That is so true. And Jennifer? Oh, I always have to go with longanisa and rice. That's my, my go-to meal. That will be my last meal. Thankfully, my husband, Carlo, can make it from scratch. So... Can't go wrong with longanisa and rice for me. <laughs> yes, and Jennifer, you make almost everything from scratch, right? Yes, yes, everything's homemade with these hands or his hands. Actually, him and my mom are just uh, wrapping up some lumpia right now for an order this weekend. So, oh my yeah. goodness, yeah. Yes. Something we should look out for. Yeah. And they're always um, at the field market on Sundays, yep. right? At the yes. Arts District in downtown yes. LA. Yes. So Kirby, what are your favorites? Uh, well, I have a lot. Uh, I was going to say lumpia, halo halo, rice. <laughs> Can't go wrong with rice. Um, but if I have to choose one, it would be Sisig, not just because I was born in Angeles City, Philippines, but also because studying the history of Sisig has a fascinating history. It used to be like a sacred dish only reserved for um, only pregnant women and mothers back in pre-colonial Kapampanga society. So for me, that's you know how deep our history is, that that dish still survives today. So Sisig would be my number one choice. That is so awesome. Now, Sisig takes on a different meaning now, right? Yeah. Because <laughs> of what you said. Yeah, that is so cool. And how about you, G? What's your favorite? My favorite is adobong poset because I'm wow. the only one that eats it. My kids are like, 
I'm not touching that. So, so for me, um, adobong posit is my favorite with uh, steam white rice. Wow, sarap nun. Man, I'm getting so hungry. <laughs> Lulu, Lulu I, over here. I know. I know. I'm like, I'm like Tulo Lawai over here. Oh my God. Um, yeah. And so I just wanted to um, find out, like, can you give us a quick summary of what you do? Like for our viewers, you know, a lot of us know um, that you are active um, in the Filipino community or in the Filipino American community, but um, like, give us a little bit of a background about what you do. So let's start with Anton. Yeah, so uh, I run Our Awesome Planet. So we've been uh, promoting uh, Filipino food and travel actually since 2005. So we've been running it. And the idea is uh, initially was to promote it to uh, to appreciate more our travel destination and, uh, and Filipino food. And um, not only internationally, but my main target is really in the Philippines also. Um, Philippines is... Uh, one of the two countries in the world where 50% of the population is under the age of 24. So we have a lot of young Filipino Gen Zs and we want this next generation that will uh, replace us to, you know, really be proud of the Filipino culture. Um, and I think all around the world also, we, uh, as you know, most uh, Filipinos have families, you know, we have brothers in the US, etc. So we wanted to really help the young ones, you know, connect to uh, the Filipino culture and be proud of it. And um, and we've been doing that uh, for a long time uh, as well. And now, of course, during the pandemic, since we've been covering the food industry, <laughs> the restaurants, the home base, and even the travel industry, they're all devastated, of course, uh, during this pandemic. So we're trying our best just to help out, like, for them to recover. So like Boracay has been closed for three or four times or people cannot uh, count anymore. It was clo And this last closure in Manila, in Boracay, was really devastating for a lot of people. A lot of restaurants had to close. A lot of hotels had to close. And so, you know, we try our best just to promote uh, as many to survive, you know, throughout uh, this pandemic. And uh, that has been a very fulfilling uh, role as well. Uh, and really showcasing the beauty of the Philippines. Yes, that is so awesome. And that's something that, you know, uh, all of us ought to do, right? Like um, we should promote our own. And that's something that we're going to touch on later. And so mm -hmm. we'll go to um, Dr. Lillian. Um, so um, what um, do you currently do? So <laughs> I teach. <laughs> Um, I, I'm the chair of the Philippine Studies Department at City College of San Francisco, and it's the only department of Philippine Studies in the nation. And so what I, what I see myself as is a really um, an advocate for departments and programs like the one that I chair um, and supporting the development of other programs and departments in other spaces. Um, that's really what I, I kind of focus on. Um, I do a lot of networking with, with colleagues across the nation, across the state. Um, we have a new Philippine X Community College Collaborative because Filipino Americans actually are the largest Asian American student population in the California Community College system. Um, so, you know, I, I'm a historian by trade. I love what I do as a, as a historian. I teach Philippine history, not Filipino American history, even though I do teach Filipino American history too. Um, and, and I think for me, what's what's really kind of um, the, the, the crux of what I do is I need to try to replace myself. You know, it's, I, I'm not gonna be doing this forever. And I need to make sure that there are others who are become interested in being an educator, being an advocate, being a historian, because these are the things that, that you know, we need to be doing to preserve our community's narratives um, as they move through time and, and space and, and as they change, you know? And so, so that's pretty much what I do. Um, yeah, I hang out with students all day. <laughs> and it's great and I love it. That is so awesome. Um, and some of us like me actually work in um, the development side of the university. So hanging out with students and um, 
also knowing what we're working for. Um, and so, um, Mr. Joel Jacinto, um, can you give us a little background about what you do with Kayamanan ng Lahi? Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you, Mick. And just to hear the stories of Anton and Dr. Lillian, you know, and that idea of the of the place, secondary education. And for me, it started at UCLA. I have to go back and give a shout out to Samahang Filipino, you know, 40 years ago. That's a long time ago. But I, I say that because <laughs> that's really culture and organizing and student activism brought me to the best part of my life, my asawa, uh, Ave. And, and, and so 40 years later, here we are with this idea of, of, of katiwala, of stewardship, of how do we share what we've learned as students and how it's enriched our lives and pass that on and make sure uh, that, that we're sharing it with, with others in our community who can also be transformed through the power of culture and the multi-dimension things of culture. So what we do on Kayamanan uh, every Sunday for 30 years or you know every week is really to look at culture as dimensions of understanding and what we think about and what we our attitudes, our beliefs, our values, uh, the behaviors, the techniques, everybody sees dance and music as performative. So we perform that. So it's all those behaviors from manapo to, uh, to, uh, to uh, playing the sulibao. And then the material culture is the, is the other aspect of culture about what we have and whether it's our food or whether it's our attire or material culture, it's all there. So. Uh, being an advocate is, 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 is what we do, but we also are practitioners. We have to be cultural people ourselves, not as performative, but living there as mm -hmm. Filipino Americans, because we got to be explicit, y'all. We can't just say, oh, this is the stage. And once we step off the stage or the screen, we're done. No, no, no. We got to be Filipino, Filipina every second of the day, very explicitly in every conversation, every project, um, putting forth our Filipino core values. So in a nutshell, that's what we try to do uh, and, and have done that. Uh, and like what Lillian said about this idea of it has to be, we have to pass on to the next generation. So um, what we do will echo seven generations down the line. So all we have to do is pass it on to the next generation and hopefully that they will pick on the stewardship and, and pass it on themselves. Yeah. Galinga. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I was, uh, as you were speaking, I literally got goosebumps because it's true, like every minute, every second, right? Um, it's about living as Filipinos and Filipinas and it's not just on stage. And right. yeah, that is so awesome. With every um, movement that Jennifer sells, yeah, she's gonna she's doing it. And every lecture that Kirby has and every program that G works on is 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 happening. So we're doing it. Y'all are doing it. So it's all good. Yes. And and speaking of Ube, I mean, so Jennifer, um, what do you do with um BBAC and what does BBAC stand for? So BBAC is the five tribes from the northern Luzon area. I actually have an illustration. <laughs> so we have um, we have Benguet, Ifugao, Mountain Province, or also Bontok, Kalinga, Abra, and Apayao. So um, it's the acronym of the five tribes. As you mentioned, it started back in the 1960s. It started off as a social group where immigrants came, uh, Ugaruts came here to Southern California, and it just evolved into this huge nonprofit where there's chapters as far as Russia. China, oh, wow. New Zealand, obviously the Philippines, you know, so it just shows a diaspora of Igorots, not just Filipinos, but Igorots as well. Um, proud Igorot, I, I was born here um, in America, but it's interesting as I talk to other Phil Ams here is that I've always known, first and foremost with my family, I'm Ibuloy first. I'm Ibuloy, Igorot, Filipino, American. And that's something that I take very, like, obviously pride in. You see that um, it reflects in our business. Kalo Jomangan is Ibuloy for come and eat. That's something that we would always hear at every family party, which was like every weekend. So, <laughs> or, you know, my, mo my parents have, uh, my mom comes from um, a big family. She has 14 siblings. My dad has five. I have over 20 cut first cousins. So, and, and not only that, you know, we have a lot of family. Bebok is just my extended family too. So, so proud to be part of Bebok. All you Igorots out there, get involved with us. There's a chapter I'm sure local to you, mm -hmm. um, but it's not 
like Joel said, it's not just performative. We're, we're about workshops, we're about teaching, we're about sharing. And we also want to get more people involved and empower them. You know, we want we want people out there to develop their professional and leadership skills and then to also showcase, you know, I'm Filipino, I'm Filipinex, I'm Igorot, I'm more than this. You know, I could do more than, you know, something in the medical field or something in um, in, in certain fields that were kind of what my my parents were in. So um, just want to put that out there. That is so true, and that's something um, that a lot a lot of younger Filipinos or Filipino Americans are going through, right? Um, our parents or forefathers have um, had a specific plan for all of us, mm -hmm. and yet, um, you know, a lot of our younger generation is actually going, you know, doing their passion, um, yeah. and and in in doing these shows, I've I've met a lot of younger Filipinos, Filipino Americans who are doing their own thing. And that's something that always comes up, um, like um, that um, idea that, you know, our forefathers, our parents or grandparents had something in mind for all of us. And yet, um, you know, there's something that we're, something else that we're doing. Um, and so Kirby, speaking of, of all of that, you're one true example of that. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and can you tell us a little bit about um, what you do as a historian? Um, I create content mostly on social media, on YouTube, on Facebook, and the other uh, platforms. Um, uh, I just share my knowledge and, and, and what I learned from my own elders. I was raised by my own lolas, my grandmas, um, and um, who are both actually um, culture bearers themselves and cultural advocates in the Philippines when I was young. So I used to shadow them when doing their doing their cultural um, activities in the Philippines. So. So for the longest time, I thought that what I knew or what I, what I was exposed to was a common thing among all Filipinos, but I was proven wrong when I moved to the U.S. And I realized that, you know, not everyone had, had that privilege of, of growing up in a cultural space. So, so for me, I, I create content mostly on social media so that, you know, more accessible content to, to our people and hopefully to inspire the younger generation, the future generation to really dig deeper and, you know, for, dig deeper and learn more about our roots, about our ancestors. And... And like what um, what the others have said already, like you know, pass down this this passion to the next generation because you know if 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 we don't pass it down, then this this fire of our heritage would just you know die. So yeah, that is so true. <laughs> That's um, what I do. <laughs> and speaking of passing down to the next generation, um, Giselle Tonji Walters <laughs> is another um, advocate in the Filipino culture bearer. So can you tell us a little bit more about Phil Amarts? Yes, yeah, so Philip Moritz is an almost 30-year-old organization that was born out of Search to Involve Filipino Americans, which is an organization in Los Angeles. Uh, joining us is, you know, one of the EDs of uh, CIPA for a very long time, Kajoel Jacinto. And I truly am just stepping into this role, right? And it's because of mentors such as Joel Jacinto in my life that I'm learning that leadership is about serving, right? And so with my new role at Philamar, it's a 30 year old organization uh, and presenter of the Festival of Philippine Arts and Culture, what I'm trying to um, do in every, every opportunity that I can is how can I amplify Filipino American artist voices, right? Um, as as Filipino Americans, we are still part of a ma marginalized community um, that hasn't been given a equal opportunity. And as a Filipina growing up, I am a mestiza. My mother is from Batangas. I I grew up not trying to ruffle any fe feathers, right? But I think we've come to a time where we have to make sure that we advocate for one or one another and ourselves. Um, and so, you know, in, in this, you know, I, I may be the next generation, but just like what Dr. Lily said, I'm also thinking about, you know, when I'm done, how can I mentor the next generation? And so because of that, Philam Arts is always looking to bridge artists together. For example, Eliseo Silva, who is a prolific um, muralist and artist, and he has one of the big biggest murals here in historic Filipino town at Unidad Park, Gintong 
pamana, gintong kasaysayan, gintong kasaysayan, gintong pamana, rather. Um, we, we wanted to introduce him to a younger artist that's also Filipino, that's just beginning to understand what, what his identity means in terms of his art. And so for us, it's about amplifying voices, bridging together other artists to build community. And I'm just so honored to have been given an opportunity to work with Philem Arts, which is you know, an organization that has deep roots in the community. So um, yeah, it's, it's, about, it's about community building. Um, and I, I'm so thankful to, um, to work with artists that are just so passionate about who they are as Filipino Americans that it really showcases in their work. Mm -hmm. Yes, and so um, speaking of mentors and influences, um, who were your biggest influences and did you have any mentors? So um, let's start with Giselle since you mentioned um, about mentors. Yes, no, absolutely. Uh, uh, I, I just graduated grad school and I didn't even think that would be possible for me if it wasn't for someone like a Joel Jacinto who said, gee, you should consider doing this. No, really, I mean, Joel's humble, like a lot of Filipinos, right? But if he didn't tell me that I could go to Antioch and even take my master's in nonprofit management, I would have never thought that that was a, a, a path for me, right? So Joel is obviously one of my mentors here in Los Angeles. So is Winston Imano, who uh, is a board member at uh, Philam Arts. Um, and a lot of my board members at Philam Arts are really, you know, people that I lean on, like Alvin Katakutan and Marcy Taylor and Teresa Kalima. These are people that I, I have a sounding board with. And I think mentorship is so important because uh, you need to have someone that you can bounce ideas off of. And if they're just as passionate, and if not more, then it really shapes who you are or who you become, um, the more knowledge that you acquire. Mm -hmm. That is so true. And um, you know what they say, like um, when you hang out with the same people, you become like them. So you surround yourself with the same people who advocate for the same thing or who has the same vision as you do, right? And so I see Alvin Katakutan and Marcy Taylor watching us right now, hello. Um, and so um, for Kirby or um, yeah, anyone else, um, who were your biggest influences and who were your mentors? Um, I guess for me, my biggest influences, influencers, <laughs> that's the new word, uh, will be my own uh, dad and my grandma, my grandparents. Um, both, again, both of my grandparents were, uh, both sets of my grandparents were um, culture bearers, culture advocates. And my dad was actually an activist in the Philippines in the 80s. Um, and and one, one thing I learned from them is that, you know, nobody's really, no, no one's perfect, that everybody, you know, nobody knows everything, but, you know, everybody knows something that we can all share and, and, and help build a community. Um, they taught me to really recognize my privileges and, and turn them into tools to really uplift our community and help uplift our community, you know, because um, being an advocate for our people is not really, you know, being in the front, being in the spotlight, but be, really being part of that movement, being building that community. Um, so that's those are the things I learned from from my grandma, my Lola, my my dad. And so shout out to my dad. I think he's watching right now. <laughs> he said he was gonna watch. Hi, dad. Um, and I guess for for mentorship, um, I don't know why, but I thought of the first thing I thought of were um, the students I work with around me, especially when I was at UC Davis, like the, the younger generation, because they teach me a lot about you know they're, they're fresh ideas. They're they're really equally passionate about digging digging deeper into our roots. So. Shout out to all the younger generation out there because I'm also getting old. <laughs> Go Aggies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and um, Jennifer? Uh, as far as, um, you know, inspiration, I will always have to give it to, to my grandma, Rose. That's my mom's grandma. She's um, she, she was really the one always there for me and my sister. And we were so fortunate to be raised with her and by her in our home. And, she, you know, as I mentioned, she was uh, very much a uh, uh, a person that practiced our Ibole traditions. And that's where I learned a lot of culturally, professionally, you know, personally, that's where I feel like a lot of my traits come from is from my grandmother. And as hard as she was, 
she was really hard. <laughs> she, I knew she, you know, she did it out of all love. And so, you know, I, I, I always think about her and I always have to acknowledge her. She passed away some years ago. And so um, I have to give it up to my grandmother. And uh, mentorship, I would have to say my sister. I know she's watching my sister, Lila May. She's up in uh, Oakland. Um, she's two years older than me. Um, she's always been more of the academic of the family. And, you know, I've been kind of like the silly person in our family and but she's she's the one that always lifts me up and and encourages me and and pushes me to be the best person that I can be along with my husband but you know my sister's been there all of my life obviously so Lila May thank you I love you that is so cool and a lot of the things that we do have familial backgrounds like right? uh, we take a lot from our own families right and so Joel speaking of family I know you have a big family your family of KNL, <laughs> KNL family. That's right. That's right. That's our panganay. But you know, I want to go back and thank you, Kaji. You know, mentorship's a two way, and you have shaped us, shaped me as much uh, as that. So, love to you, sister, for for all that you do and all that you shape. On that, you know, um, for me, the the role models and the mentors have been Kumu, and in in Hawaiian, Kumu means teacher. So let's tell our brothers and sisters that Kumu that kumu is a source so that's a wonderful name for a network I love it kumu it means also means cool my teachers have been individuals and jennifer seeing you it comes to mind uh manu marshall wanda who has joined our angels you know in in terms of being a kalinga elder and and uh, adopting uh, a young phil am no matter what individuals like ramon obusan the anthropologist the national artist mm -hmm. for dance you know who says uh, you bring the the village to stage pati yung amoy uh, my kumu my hawaiian kumu frank polanico hala because I, I i got filipinized through the hula world so i have a lens as a philam through hula and all these people who give who are our sources you know um really cause this this idea that we have to give back it's our kuliana our privilege, responsibility to give to everybody else and to the next generation. So um, shout out to all the angels, uh, especially Manu Marsh. And Dr. Lillian. So it shouldn't be a surprise that most of the folks who had the most influence have been teachers. And so um, I actually got into what I do because of my, my Tagalog teachers in middle school and high school. And I know that I was blessed to have been able to take Filipino at that point in my life. Um, and it grounded me in ways that I did not understand until very much later. Um, and then, so Ginang, Ginang Lopez de Lute, who passed on um, 16 years ago, but I still go visit her, her grave when I go home. Um, and then my Ginang Sally Idos, who's, who's still with us and I adore her. She, she went to my wedding and she's so cute. She was just like, that's my president. Cause I was the president of a high school club <laughs> like hella long ago and I'm like, um, but really, when I was I was an undergraduate, I was sophomore in, um, at UCI, Zot Zot, um, and I met a historian from UCLA who was there kind of um, teaching Philippine history classes. Um, and I was talking to him one day, he's like, you're going to go do your PhD. I'm like, okay, <laughs> you're going to do it in this. <laughs> you're going to you're going to look at, at Philippine theater, nationalism, da, 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 da. I'm like, okay. And I did like it, that never changed. That never changed. And a lot of the folks who, um, you know, I, I went to school at Northern Illinois University and, and people were just like, what are you doing? <laughs> and, and really kind of like Damon Woods, who ends up being my Ninong at my wedding, because that's what we do, right? Um, he's a wonderful, wonderful, amazing person who's just been um, a, a guide, a goodbye in, in so many ways for me. Um, and then the, the other person who really kind of molded and shaped what my, my path has been, and she passed on um, late last year was um, at the Susan Kimpo. So she, she was an amazing individual who, who really championed um, Filipino language. Um, I went to the Philippines for 10 weeks to do intensive language study because of her, and that changed my life. Um, and you know she the work that she continued to do even after um, the Galagan site kind of evolved into something different was was really kind of um, powerful and, and influential and, and, and really inspirational. So so when I think about my influences and I can pinpoint them, 
um, those four people are really kind of uh, uh, have shaped who I've become, um, you know, as a, as a person, uh, as an educator. Thank you. Relang. That is so cool. Yes. And so we're learning a lot of things, you know, just from um, getting to know our panelists. And um, um, Anton, can you get, um, yeah. share with us who were your uh, mentors and influences? For, for our awesome planet, I'm really inspired by, you know, our family culture. The Filipino, you know, we have the best family culture. And I'm really inspired by our family. Uh, my wife, uh uh, Rach, uh, known as Mrs. Awesome Planet, and our four boys. We have four boys, 16, 11, very young, no? And uh, I'm inspired to build a world that, um, you know, that they will live on with, um, you know, being proud of our Filipino culture, the food, and uh, her heritage, not only in the Philippines, but with a global mindset, no? The, you know, Filipinos are taking over the world, and uh, yun lang, which we need to uh, unite more uh, in promoting our culture uh, around the world. And when I started blogging, that this was in 2005, and uh, I remember then when I quit my job in Procter & Gamble, Philippines, you know, uh, when I was saying I'm just blogging, you know, people look down on bloggers, uh, social media during that time. But now, of course, on hindsight, it really makes sense to me that decision. So one of my mentors at the time, my boss, my general manager of PNJ Philippines at the time was Johnny Kua, who was really instrumental in, you know, telling me, hey, you know, there's something here on digital marketing and etc. And I remember... So there was no digital market in the Philippines then. So I had to go to uh, the U.S. No, There was this Rich Sheffern conference in Florida. And this guy spoke for the first time uh, in that conference, and that changed my whole direction. And that guy was named Gary Vaynerchuk. Uh, he was talking Gary about v. Crush, not yet uh, Gary V. You know, not yet as a book. First time he was talking about this, you know, how he promoted his wine business in New Jersey, etc. And... That was just so um, career changing. And so that's why we went in this uh, digital entrepreneurship. Uh, I'm the first time entrepreneur in the family as well. So it was really hard um, for the last 15, 16 years. Uh, now, though, uh, everything got fast forward <laughs> because of the pandemic. All the technology innovation. Wow. Um, there's uh, a lot that's happening. And, um, and I realized... The more that uh, we need to have a foundation of our culture, because um, you know during the pandemic, uh, we started a, a separate business. It's called Awesome Ten X. So we're creating Filipino retail investors, like in the US, maybe you know it as Wall, Wall Street Bets and Reddit. So we're teaching Filipinos to invest globally, you know, directly, no, not during mutual funds, and we're investing a lot of technology innovation. You know, the rate of technology innovation. Well, 10 times uh, from now on and uh, because of the pandemic. And just imagine if you're not rooted on your arts and culture, it will be chaos. So that's why we really need to unite together. And I think the family, Filipino family, is so much a big treasure for a lot of us. And um, so you were talking about like all these changes in the last 10 years, right? Did you encounter um, any challenges and was there a point when you wanted to give up and you know like just completely give up and what was the turning point that made you want to move on and, and move forward uh i think um once that you started to connect to people online uh because before you know it's very hard you have to go face to face uh and once you get you know these messages from the filipinos you touch um the audience you touch the people reading the blogs and how they help uh, because uh, in initially we were doing, you know, all the best restaurant, you know, once we discover a new restaurant, hey, or a uh, new Filipino food or a new destination. So we would share it with everybody. So um, getting those initial messages of support that, hey, what you're doing is right. And now, you know, in 2005, just imagine people were not proud of Filipino food, were not proud of uh, the beaches in the Philippines. It was so hard, but... Um, now that um you know uh, it's now pretty much covered all around that we have the best beaches um so it's good uh 
And that's why for people watching out there, you know, just sending your appreciation, you know, just a short message, a uh, short email that you love what you do, what you heard, would really fuel your passion and get you through that, you know, uh, those bad moments uh, when you want to decide to quit. That is so cool. Thank you so much. And Dr. Lillian, was there every time ever a time when you wanted to give up? As far as teaching, there are a lot of challenges in teaching, right? In education. <laughs> this last year has been ridiculous. And I'm sure everybody knows that. Whether you're a parent, an educator, or a student, like this entire around the world, right? It's been absolutely nuts. Um, that didn't want to make me quit. Like there were times where it's just like, oh, can I just shut, shut off my Zoom, please? Um, but you know, there was a moment where I I was in graduate school and uh, you know, I was asked by by somebody in our department who was just like, what are you doing? Like, why would you want to do that? Like, you're not going to get a job doing that. And for me, I knew that it would be difficult um, because I was adamant about I'm doing Philippine history, not, you know, I'm not doing this larger kind of thing. I'm not going to do something comparative. I'm not, you know, I'm just like, I'm doing Philippine history and this is my dissertation topic. And you're not going to tell me that. I'm going to change it or you need to change it. And I think that um, some folks got upset with me, but that's okay. I'm totally fine with fighting. <laughs> um, and, you know, I I said that I was going to go back to California. I'm going to teach Philippine history and I'll figure it out. Um, and there was a moment where it was just like, well, you're not going to get a job. Um, and literally, I'm the only tenured professor in Philippine studies in the nation. <laughs> and, so, and, it, and I'm just like, well, I mean... I got lucky. I know, I know I got lucky. Right. But it's, you know, I think for me, I was so committed to this idea of, well, I'm going to be a historian and I'm going to study the Philippines because we have a, a plethora of wonderful Filipino American historians. Um, and I'm going to contribute and give back in that way. And I landed in, San Francisco in, in, 20, in 2010, didn't know what I was doing. Um, I, I kind of hustled and did some nonprofit work, you know, and then, you know, four years later, they're just like, oh, there's a position in Philippine Studies open. <laughs> like, what? And I have to give a shout out to my, my dear sister, Dr. Melissa <laughs> Nevera Lozano, who was the one who actually, like, sent me the email and they're like, hey, they're hiring. I'm like, okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think if anything, despite the challenges, there have been way too many points of positivity and um, people telling me that it'll be okay, it will manifest in the way that you want it to, if you work at it, you know, and, and, and put in the time. Um, and I, despite everything, I, I absolutely love what I do. You know, my students know it. I think everybody knows it. But you know, it's 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 gratifying, and it's it's um, you know, I I, I can't I, I I wouldn't want to do anything else. And I'm thankful for the, the opportunity to do this in service to our community. You know, thank you so much. And just that passion. I mean, it really manifests itself. Like, you know, we can really tell that you're happy about what you're doing every single day. And um, so Joel um. Did you meet any challenges? I'm sure it's really, you know, difficult to run a nonprofit org and a dance company at that. Um, but was there ever a time when you wanted to give up and how did you move on from that? Nope. <laughs> it's uh, this idea. If 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 culture is our lives, if culture is our gamut, if culture is what helps us thrive and 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 have this sense of ginhawa and wellness and be whole, then when we don't get a chance to do it or when we don't do it well, when we don't live well, those are the times that have given us or me grief or, or taught me lessons, tough ones. But in general, you know, it is our lives. And so therefore, as long as I'm living, as long as I'm breathing, this is what we're doing because we're, we're being us, not in a performative, not in an instructional, but just us present 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 so make I'm, I'm privileged to be able to do this and so i want to do this for as long until the beat goes on you don't stop hip-hop <laughs> never stop can't that's what kuyamon said 
Joel Nagdudugo, you will sweat blood. You will give blood, but you will be blessed. You're so right, Kuya Mon. Salamat. Gur Danny said, you know, Joel, Gur Danny Kalanduyan, one of our other mentors who has spawned Kulintang lives in America because of Guru Danny Kalanduyan. He said, Joel, Kulintang brings people, culture brings people together. Use your culture to bring people together. So I've been blessed to work with Dr. Lillian on these dance gatherings and workshops that we brought people from all over the United States with Jennifer on the, you know, I love Bibak and I consider myself uh, an adopted uh, a Bibak member, right? Because cut our teeth and, and Jesus' sister and Anton and Kirby are now brothers. So, come in a man. This is what we do. That is so cool. I mean, like everything is so enriching, like everything that I'm hearing. It's like, wow, this is so awesome. Um, and so, G, um, were there any challenges? I'm sure there were, I mean, a lot of challenges, but was there ever a time when you wanted to give up? And what were those like challenges? So, um, you know, of course there, there are challenges and, um, you know, lots of tears, lots of tears, lots of heartache. But when you are so passionate about something, that's why there are tears, right? Because you care so much, so much so that it's you cannot separate yourself from what you do because you live it, you breathe it, right? And so for me, I, I really have to admit, I have become more nationalistic being away from the Philippines. And Anton, I know you're there in the Philippines, no? But, you know, being an activist and an artist, an artivist, right? Learning how to use my voice to really share what I believe in. Um, and, you know, yes, there's, I get a lot of bashing because I'm very outspoken about my political stances right but i'm learning i'm still young i'm learning from mentors such as yourself that you know um pain comes with with the passion right it's learning how to be able to react not be reactionary but be mindful about Bakit bang sakit? why do i care so much Right. And, and uh, I, I have to admit, I'm a people pleaser and I, I want to be able to always be in service. But at the same time, I'm learning as I'm getting older that boundaries are a good thing. That it's OK to say no. You don't have to say yes to everything. Right. Because that's how I can take care of myself. And uh, and so balance. I think balance is, is what I'm learning to be very discerning about, Nick. That's something that we should all learn, right? Setting boundaries and knowing ourselves and knowing what, um, staying true to what we love doing, right? And so, yeah, like I, I'm learning myself. It's like, you know, when you love something, there is a lot of pain, but then you're, you know, you end up like a happy person like Dr. Lillian is, <laughs> you know. Um, and so Kirby, what were the challenges? Um, I'm sure there are a lot of challenges, mm -hmm. you know, like going through grad school and doing what you do. Um, for me, the, the challenge I can think of right now is really, when you put content out there in the internet, you know, you, you you face a lot of ha hatred from people. The internet can be a place of hate. Um, and, and for me, there are days that I really like doubt myself, like why am I making these YouTube videos? Why am I putting myself out there when I get you know, all of these hate? But, but like what Anton said earlier, you know, when you start connecting with the audience, then that's really empowering. And, and you know, when you, you start connecting with audience like that are like thousands of miles away, that, was, that, that really reminds me of, of why I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, and and it, this brings me back to, um, um, to Dr. Lili and um, comment earlier how how there's a lot more points of positivity out there than, than the hate that sometimes the hate kind of overpowers the, or what you see online but there's really a lot more love out there in the community um and then i turned you know i turned to the, to my inanax my my nephews and nieces and it really reminds me of how you know how or why am i doing it you know and, and then say saying no nope to the haters <laughs> like what queer jola said nope <laughs> so saying nope to the haters out there and then this is really reminds me of you know um by embracing ourselves, you know, um, for me, embracing our roots, embracing our identity really 
empowers us. It it really makes us it it, it, it contributes more to our success than 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 avoiding it, than the denying it. Um, and if you and again, if you you put your heart into it, and then you add in hard work, and and put boundaries, <laughs> you know, you it, we can really be unstoppable. And yeah, I need to learn to put boundaries between like, you know, between me and reading those comments on my YouTube channel. <laughs> Thanks for the reminder. <laughs> and Jennifer? Um, well, uh, as far as an entrepreneur, I'm about one year in. We just celebrated our one year of College of Catering. Thank you in March. Um, before that, what I was doing prior, I was at, uh, in the hospitality industry for 20 years. I was doing hotel sales, banquet, food and beverage. Um, and it's interesting just to just to go off with Joel. I mean, when you asked him, have you ever wanted to quit? And he said no. And even though I'm only a year in and you can imagine the challenges of opening a business during a pandemic, let alone a food and beverage customer base business, Heck yeah, there were time. There were some frustrating times, but I never wanted to quit. I never wanted to quit. And working uh, in a corporate world for over twenty years, and hospitality truly is my passion. That stems from culture and family. But to do what I'm doing now is, you know, it, it, I tear up sometimes because this is exactly what I feel like I was meant to be. And I feel like, um, even though in in technic in techniques. You know, we're serving food and whatnot, customer service, all that. I'm doing the same thing that I did before, but it's my, it's our own. It's our Filipino food. It's our culture that we're sharing with the world. And, you know, what what brings me the most joy out of this, I know you're talking about challenges, now I'm going off on a tangent, but <laughs> what brings me the most joy is really sharing our food with non-Filipinos, you know, and, 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 sharing and teaching them. And, and, you know, I remember times when I had non-Filipinos come to my house and it's like, what's that smell in your house? You know, and it's, and it was insulting to me. And now it's kind of like, oh, you know, this is great. I'm open to learning now. I want to learn and I'm, I want to taste and it's really great. And thank you for sharing. So no, I don't want to stop. And, and if there was ever a time, I always think about why I'm doing this. We always go back to our why what we do, what we do, so. Yes, and yeah, please don't stop because we love your food. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you. yeah, I have to pay a, a visit to you guys at the field market in downtown. Um, and so what were your memorable experience experiences? I'm sure a lot of you have had memorable experiences, but what was that one cathartic moment that kind of changed everything or what was that one memorable experience that stayed you know for with you for a long time now everyone's thinking <laughs> so anton let's start with anton yeah i think uh for me um because uh, again my my story was uh, in 2005 we were just doing online and nobody was believing online and you know people were just doing tv newspaper there was no advertising coming in we had to do it for a lot of years um and one of the biggest moment was uh, in 2015 um the, the department of tourism had this award for media and uh, they gave an award to our awesome planet for just purely 100% digital. And that was mind-blowing. And that I, I know now, maybe that's not anything, but uh, you have to remember, nobody was believing digital will happen uh, in the Philippines. Um, so that was so uh, beautiful for uh, our late DOT secretary to recognize that. Congratulations. And I'm sure um, you've gone a long way from 2005 to, to now, right? I mean, like our awesome planet is so big. I mean, it's as big as the. It should be our awesome galaxy. Yes. Com. <laughs> what What I'm trying to do now, because um, I noticed when we were traveling that the Filipinos sometimes, you know, the Filipinos in the U.S. Just think about Filipinos in the U.S. or the Filipinos in the Philippines. Just think about Filipino in the. Philippines, or if they're Filipinos in Singapore, they just talk about Filipinos in Singapore. I think now is the time that the diaspora 
really you unite maybe not for our generation but for the next generation you know our kids that's very common to all the filipinos around the world and if we can connect them that will be the best you know <laughs> and uh like like live streams like this it's very beautiful you know connecting manila with uh you know the us our brothers in the us that's actually how it should be done and um there will come a time that our kids will rule the world and, um, you know, I mean, that will be the time. And hopefully we're still alive to see that. <laughs> and um, to anyone else, like memorable experiences, like um, Dr. Le Leanne? I, I, was, I actually wanted to, to go off what Anton was saying because I think it's, it's really interesting. What I've always noticed um, is that, you know, my parents migrated here in the 70s. And, you know, when I think about technology and I think about um, how people remember, right? Um, I think there was a more static kind of understanding of what they left, right? But that's changed because of technology now. You know, I mean, it, I can call my, my ate in, in, you know, in Batangas right now if I wanted to. You know, and it won't cost me three hundred dollars to call her. You know, um, and and so I think about how the proximity that we have to each other is so different now. You know, but what I do know, or what I've I've observed over the years, is yes, Filipino Americans. And I'm Filipino American. I was born and raised here. Have a very kind of, you know. <laughs> A very specific kind of way of understanding the Filipino experience. And you can't fault that, right? I, I get why that is. But the question becomes, okay, well, how do you kind of grow that? How do you broaden that? And how do you do that beyond like, oh, yeah, I went to the Philippines once and it was horrible. And, you know, and, you know, da, 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 da. And, and like for me, I mean, I know that spending, you know, 10 weeks in the Philippines by myself without my family, like without my parents, blew my mind, right? Because I saw the Philippines in such a different way. Um, and, and so, you know, I, I think about that a lot. And I, I, I want, you know, future generations to be able to feel like they can do that. And I feel like they can actually do that now, you know, through Kumu, through, through live streams like this, through all these other different ways, which is really amazing to me. But um, I'm sorry, Nick, what was, I'm horrible. I have a very bad short-term memory. What was the question, the initial question? That is so cool. I mean, you were, um, yeah, touching upon a really cool topic. It's something, you know, a lot of us should take note of, right? I mean, that connecting connectedness and the um, connecting, like, Filipinos and Filipino-Americans. Um, but um, going back to the question, um, what were your memorable memories like most memorable experiences. Oh, okay. So I, I <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I think I get to relive that every single year when I see students graduate. That's that's always kind of a highlight for me, and I get to do it every single year because it's it's part of what I do, um, and and, and I, I feel blessed that I get to kind of do that every every year. Um, so. I'm going to stop talking now because I take way too much space. That's something that makes a lot of us tear up, right? Because um, when, you know, stu your students graduate, I mean, you know, like that, that's like, that must be like the proudest moment, right? Um, and Joel, were there any like most memorable experiences? Oh, I'm sure man. there are so much. So many. There's one. There's one. And I'm going to riff off of Sir Anton. 2015 was a real good year because in 2015, our group Kayamana Nanglai, together with Kaji, was invited to, to be a part of this thing called Merry Monarch. And it's the Olympics of Hula and it's on the big island of Hawaii. And it's been, it is the worldwide sensation. And here we were as a Phil Am group being given the opportunity to represent the, the diaspora, not just the Philippines, but the diaspora on that stage at the Edith Kanaka Ole Stadium, because there have been thousands of hula dancers of Filipino or part Filipino descent dancing with the halal, but to be given the opportunity to do our cultura, our culture, and to bring a mambaba talk and Lane Wilkin, and, and, and to, to do that was, was really chicken skin, which is the Hawaiian word for kiliti or kilig, you know what I mean? So remember that Kaji, we were there representing ourselves. And it was a moment that um, where we shared 
the diaspora from Southeast Asians to Polynesians. And you know, we're family, we're Ohana, y'all. We're not separate. We're not trying to be Pacific Islanders. We are their ancestors. Hello. So parang it was it was great. That was a moment because that was about again connections and about the diaspora and what binds us as opposed to what separates us, not nation state. You know, we're all we all have batok. We all do the same thing. We all tap. We all have rhythm. But that was a moment in time. Yeah, Kaji. Yeah. Right on. <laughs> so, G, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah. So, uh, that was definitely one of the highlights of my work when I was at, um, at LA 18. You know, I hosted a daily talk show every single day. But when I got invited to cover the Merry Monarch and go to Hawaii, not just because it was Hawaii, but I really saw so much of the connection with the Hawaiian, Polynesian, and Filipino, um, you know, uh, 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 behaviors and 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 things that it, it just clicked, you know, like uh, the way in which we greet each other and and the fact that the people watching it was the first time for them to see an all Filipino on stage. I mean, that's such a powerful moment uh, as a producer. And then another moment that I can remember is when I went to UCLA and I was part of Samahang Filipino. And then I got to go back and perform for the 40th anniversary of Samahang Filipino as a Kayamana ng Lahi dancer. Um, dancing on the stage that was really special for me because it, it was like, you know, parang umikot ang munda ang ang, yeah. di ba? Like full circle, right? Yeah. You went to school there, but now you're performing as an alumni. It was so meaningful for me because I, I was just so proud, so proud of that time. That is so awesome. I mean, everything that I'm hearing is so, you know, like it's so heartwarming, right? Um, and so Kirby, do you have any like most memorable experiences thus far? Um, when it comes to making my YouTube videos, it goes back to this, this, this um, idea or this notion of technology. Um, I have a lot of small but meaningful memories with, with the, the people I connect with with my videos um the three that i can think of right now is one when i went to a medical mission with nafcon in tondo in, in the smoky mountain in manila in a very impoverished community i was approached by by younger kids asking me if i'm that guy from from youtube <laughs> because they watched my videos and they were inspired by it and at first i was like are you you're probably talking about my cousin atom this famous journalist in the philippines but i was like but they're like no it's you it's youtube not tv it's like okay um and then another one is this um high school student in thailand um kairos so shout out to kairos if you're watching um he grew up in thailand he was raised in thailand and and apparently I, i'm his way of, of reconnecting with his roots and learning more about about the philippines and and he knows a lot about the philippines um now um his mom messages me hi at the unis <laughs> um and and the third one i can think of was just the other day i was tagging this um instagram account of this seven-year-old kid in i'm not sure which state it is but he's a filipino american kid who started making his videos making history videos about our filipino culture at the age of seven so if you want to check him out i think his name on instagram is michael let me see michael angelo rizal so he started making videos at age seven so for me these are really like meaningful and and really um Reminds me of why what I, why I'm doing what I'm doing. Yeah. So thanks to technology, <laughs> you can connect. That is so awesome. That is so awesome. And Jennifer, do you have any like memorable experiences? Uh, many. Um, but what I'll talk about is uh, in reference to Bebop. Um, so Bebop, uh, the first Igorot consultation, international consultation, I want to say is uh, 94, 96. I'm sure I'll get corrected by my Igorot mates there. One of those years. But I just remember being a teenager and I was amazed. I want to say it could have been um, over about 500 people from all internationally 
um, bringing coming together for this conference, this consultation in West Covina, California. And I just remember helping out in the registration desk and that really, you know, doing those kinds of things in, in these, in, you know, nonprofit organizations and in these communities, communities really drove me to do what I'm doing now. And I'm such an advocate for getting involved in your community and contributing to nonprofit because it really, it really shaped me uh, professionally, really professionally, and 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 it really led me to what I'm doing now. And I just want to give back and do what Bebok and my uncle Rex, you know, who was um, a spearhead, and Uncle Marshall, um, who really, who really laid down the foundation of what what Bebok has become. And I just want to make sure that it continues for future generations, like my children. That is so cool. Yeah. So. Um, and what would you tell the younger generation? So speaking of your children and, um, you know, handing down the torch and, um, making sure that, you know, the legacy of, um, um, preserving Philippine culture and Philippine history and art, um, is passed down to the next generation. What would you tell the younger generation? Dr. Lily, it looks like you have something to say. Oh no, it was uh, Giselle's puppy's really cute. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was responding to like, oh, my God. Um, well, I, I guess I could. I, I think for me, um, I, I think about, I, I tell my students, you know, I, I do love what I do. And I think for, for them, whatever they do, they need to kind of find the love for it, right? And love the learning of it. Do the unsexy work. There is so much unsexy work that goes into you know, getting to this point and a whole lot of folks don't, it's like, oh, that, I don't want to do that. I'm like, N do it. <laughs> like, you know, because it's, those are important skills, right? You can't just go from point A to point Z and be like, oh, look at me now, right? Like, you need to do that stuff in the middle so that you can build your skills foundation. And so I, I think about that, um, you know, I, I, because I'm an educator, <laughs> I tell, and if, if students want to become educators, I apologize to all parents who's had me, who's kids have had me as a student are, and are now like history majors. I apologize. Well, not really, actually. But, you know, expect people to tell you that you're not going to make any money, you know, and, and really kind of like, don't let that deter what you're going to do. Because if it comes that question of, is it more important to have material wealth? or peace of mind and um, heart, you know? And, and I do believe that there is a, an intersection of those things. I think for, for a lot of folks who are surviving, right? Particularly first-generation immigrants, it's about survival. And I absolutely get that. You know, you suffer, you do mm -hmm. it for the next generation and this and that. But my thing has always been, you know, it's, it's not always about the money. And if you work hard enough and you figure it out and you hustle, right? It'll come. The wealth in whatever way it manifests will come, right? Um, and then finally, know that what you do is valuable and there it, it's, it's measured in the ways that your impact will be felt through the generations. You know, I, I mean, I, I really do, think about that um because you know it's 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 hard to do what what we all do in many ways um and, and explaining it to our elders sometimes who are just like why didn't you just become a nurse why don't you become the doctor that actually is a doctor but not the doctor who can't help can't help people right <laughs> um it's it's that thing um and and i i hope that our those who come after us will see their value in whatever they do. Um, and yeah, okay. And um, so be before we continue, I just um, wanted to tell everybody that we do have a raffle um, that's coming up. So to those people who want to join hashtag raffle right now, yeah, Arvin just reminded me. So hashtag raffle right now. So going back to our question, um, what would you tell the younger generation um, Joel? 
Thank you, Mick. Thank you. And Dr. Lillian, thank you for that too. You know, I have children. I have two boys, Kai and Keanu, and one's in business and one is in, in fashion. Um, but I, I, I think, you know, at this stage and, and, and uh, having a life, a full life, an eventful life, and a lot more to go, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to borrow from Brother Anton, Sir Anton, who, who we put out there, you know, living a life in Christ, living a life of faith. Because all we have, all our our bounty, all our, our everything that comes from above and awanang Dios. And so we have to give it back up to him because he who made us. So all, all praise and honor. Uh, and they say, let let them praise his name through song and dance. And so uh, for, for the younger generation, at least mine, I can only, uh, and not so much telling them, but hopefully that they will, whatever luck by they choose, whatever journey they are on, that they're guided by, by good core values. Of of kapwa of of sharing that 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 shared identity of pakiramdam about understanding and just being sensitive and you know that intuition that you know about people you know how to serve people you know how to understand in them and that kagandang loob that whatever you do that you you got to be good you know and I try to my my Hawaiian my given Hawaiian name is kalokumaikai so the person inside sa sa loob local is good so i try to live that and i hope that um um they whatever whatever their journey is wherever they're going on their luck by that they be guided by these core values that's all we could do but give it up and, and thank god for our lives and and for the ability to be here with all y'all i'm hungry though i don't know about yes. you but i'm <laughs> <laughs> all that took a talk about food earlier right um and so um, do you have, um, do any of you have um, anything to add as far as um, what you want to tell our younger generation? Yeah, um, I just wanted to uh, kick off from Joel. Um, you know, I've been travel blogging for a long time um, and we've been to all destinations, you know, to the Holy Land, to Ireland, etc. But you know what's the ultimate travel destination? Do you guys know what's the ultimate travel destination? It's the heaven. Philippines? <laughs> no, it's heaven. And we want, uh, as a Filipino nation, we want to bring not only our family, but all the Filipino families to heaven. And I think that's one of the things na we're really teaching our kids uh, because uh, Filipino is really grounded on our spirituality as well. So, Yes. And um, um, Jennifer, Kirby, RG, do you have anything to add? I think just going, I, I love what Dr. Leanne said, Joel, Anton. I mean, I think, you know, it took me 40 years to, to uh, learn this, but just do what you love and do what's passionate. And, you know, you don't have to fit in a box. You don't have to check off boxes or, you know, but do what you really love and, and serve and be good and kind and love and don't be afraid. Don't be afraid because, you know, money will come and you'll be, and that will, like Dr. Leanne said, money will come, it will manifest. So just do what you love and be, and, and be good and kind. Giselle? I, I, um, I have children too. And, you know, one of the biggest things for me is, is how, how can I, lead by example yeah and it's hard <laughs> it's really hard right but i have to i have to live by the standard that i want to exemplify in my kids and so you know um when it comes to the youth i'm always about understand that you know there is a road less traveled and it may be scary but for me it's how can you reach out to people that you have seen go down that road that may be less traveled but have found um their calling right i i i truly believe in you know using this 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 phone right we are all producers now so what does it what does it look like for us to to tell the youth to share their stories that their narratives are important. Um, so, you know, I, I, I wanna encourage all the youth to, to not just go on TikTok, 
but to use it as a way to create how do you talk to your lolo and your lola and you know record them right these are stories that we need to pass down um and it's really important that they know where we came from so cuento uh take the time to make cuento with your elders because sometimes the elders will be like you know i don't want to talk about that but keep on pushing because there's multi layers um that we can all learn from when we take the time to listen yeah and if i can add to what g said um you know like like how i end my videos some of my videos not all of them <laughs> but you know i remind uh, my viewers you know to you know embrace our roots and embracing our roots embracing our history knowing about it it's not just this you know nostalgic feeling of like going back to the past because you know our ancestors were hella gold <laughs> you know it's not just about the glitz and glamour of our ancestors but you know you know you shouldn't you shouldn't look at the past and ignore the present you should immerse yourself with the realities of our people today and for me digging deeper about our roots our history is really you know being awakened and being like immersed in the realities that you know be empowered and 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 uh, what do you call this how do i say it? be empowered with the with the wisdom and the weapons from our ancestors and so like what you said talk to your elders talk to our elders if, if they're still around you know don't just dismiss their story because a lot of us dismiss like oh this kwentong lola lang yan. that's not true but you know th these are our stories these are a part of our old traditions and and for me our, our people's history and our people's culture really starts at home so if we don't you know learn from them then how, what are we going to pass down to the next generation and and what and after you learn from them you know produce something and share it to the world share, so we can all learn from one another thank you <laughs> that is so true and um thank you so much to all of our guest panelists a lot of us um and our viewers learned a lot of things and thank you for your words of wisdom and your heartwarming stories and so we're in who are we like it used to be who is socal but we've expanded so now we're who are we right um and at who are we we always have raffles um and tonight we do have a raffle um we have three prizes um let me show you the first one so our first raffle prize is three facial masks and one wet wipe set from the hi-fi hedgehog that's actually mine um that's my company and i represent hi-fi which is a historic filipino town and is giving visibility to historic Filipino town. That's why I named it Hi-Fi Hedgehog. Um, and we do have one prize from Bodhi's Light. And just like all of you, um, Dia, who's the owner of Bodhi's Light, has a really, really heartwarming story of why she came up with Bodhi's Light. And so does Maria of Sunkissed Pinay. And she makes um, jewelry um, with some Philippine flag-inspired um, designs. And so um if you're ready arvin if you're um ready for the raffle let me know um yes and um does anyone have like um current projects so we'll, we'll answer that later before we go so we're doing raffle number one which is the three facial masks and one wet wipes are we ready We don't have sound effects today. Usually we have a drum roll. Um, and so Sam, Sam, um, yeah. congratulations. Um, so Sam, Sam's the winner of the three facial wipes uh, um, and wet, facial mask and wait, wait, wet wipe. Um, and then for the second prize, Arvin, are you ready? So Jay Lawrence Diaz, um, congratulations. I swear I'm not related. <laughs> um, congratulations. Um, and so to all of our winners, we're going to connect you with the raffle sponsor so that we can figure out how we can get the prices to you. And so our third prize is um, um, from Sun Sunkist Pinay. So the Philippine flag jewelry um, inspired designs.
Congratulations, Nikki Kirkhill. Be luck. The loser. There you go. There's an air horn. Congratulations to all of our winners. And I will put you all in a group chat um, to connect you all with the raffle sponsors. And so before we go, um, do any of you have current projects or anything happening that you want our viewers to know about? Yeah. Dr. Lily. So just really quickly, um, I am very excited to let everybody know that um, the City College of San Francisco now has an associate's degree in Philippine studies that will be open for um, enrollment Yay. starting spring 2022. Um, right now we are in remote teaching. So if students want to take classes, they can. We also have a certificate of achievement in Philippine studies as well as a certificate of uh, um, of achievement in Filipino language. So super excited that that's happening and, you know, co collaborating with um, community colleges across the state. Um, and if folks are interested, you know, um, find us on Facebook, we're on Instagram and Twitter and things like that. But I, one last thing that I did want to say just real quick, for everybody who's out there, don't ever let anybody tell you that you are not Filipino enough. Okay. You are Filipino, period. If you feel like you are Filipino and you are, you are in this with us, okay? So, and I know that, you know, a lot of my students have heard that. And so that's where I come from. That's, that's what I'm, I'm speaking from. You are Filipino enough. Okay, I'm gonna stop it. All right. Yeah, Mick. Um, so you wanted to uh, add, by the way, that's my brother who won. In the <laughs> yeah, he's based in Soka. Um, so I, our latest project is a project called Awesome 10X. So we're teaching actually Filipino. Our group is predominantly Filipino to, it's a retail investor of Filipinos. Um, and we're teaching them to 10X their money in 10 years. Because, you know, the next uh, Apple, the next Tesla, the next... Uh, you know, Bitcoin is happening now. And there's a lot of new technology innovation you want to invest. So check out awesome10x.com and our Discord server, discord.gg slash awesome10x. And if you're Filipino, join us. It's a really fun way to globally invest your money. Hi, everyone. I want to share. 13. 13. Yes, 13. Yes. Okay. Uh, and please follow Cinema Sala. Uh, they are doing um, a live watch Twitter party um, on June 12th, on Saturday. Please let's support 13. It's the first animation that's out in Netflix. If this does well, you know we're going to see more Filipino narratives. So please. Please watch. Yeah. Yes. Cool, 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 cool. Y'all, as we come up on June 12th, uh, Aaron and Kalayaan, June 19th is Juneteenth, Emancipation yes. of Slavery. Kayamanan and the Lula Washington Dance Company, Dance Theater, are doing Kapwa equals Ubuntu. I am because you are. We're going to collaborate with the premier African-American dance company in LA on Juneteenth over in Crenshaw in the hood. Come through. Love you all. Mick, you are the master connector. Mick, you. So salamat to you, sister. For we mahalo, we malama you because you brought us together and we've had such, I've had, I know we all have had such a great time. So we love you, Mick. Salamat. Thank, Thank you. you. Salamat. And anyone else? Um, as a new project, oh, your book, project. Your book, yeah, I know. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, yeah, so, so I did uh, uh, for June 12th, for, for Independence Day, the 123rd anniversary of Philippine independence from Spain. I'm doing a flash sale of all my books on my website for 12% off. So if you use the code June 12th <laughs> on, check up on uh, a checkout, you can get, yeah, 12% off on all my books and coloring books. Yay. And I also did a, a review of Tres's trailer with the breakdown of some of the mythologies they show. So you check it out on my YouTube channel. Salamat. Hey. And Jennifer? Oh, please um, come visit us in Philad Market every Sunday um, in Manila. It's called Manila District LA in the Arts District. Um, the All of the businesses there are Filipino owned. So come out and support your local LA Filipino owned businesses. Uh, please follow us on our social medias, Instagram, Facebook, 
TikTok, whatever else is there. Call it Joe Catering LA. Um, we do a lot of fun stuff on there. If you don't want to eat our food, we will entertain you with our dances and singing. Um, and we are coming, we are so happy to be collaborating with the palace, with Elmwood Organics. We're doing an elevated dinner on June 26th. It's a very limited seating capacity. It'll be in um, LA, uh, up to 20 people. So please check us out. It's all posted on our website also, and please all, on our social media as well. So. If you haven't tried us yet, please do. Thank you so yes. much, Mick. Thank you all. It was so great to see you guys. Nice to meet you all. Thank Truly you. honored. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And this show Lama. was presented in honor of Philippine Independence Day, which is tomorrow here in the U.S., June 12th. Um, not tomorrow, like two days from now, but tomorrow. Oh, my gosh. So tomorrow, June 11, um, we have a show at the Noi Pits in downtown LA, this little Tokyo, downtown LA. That's our very first live concert. And um, mm -hmm. yours truly, Anthony Ferranda and Kuya Ed, of course, are hosting. And we have Garth Garcia, um, Chella, or LA funk band Chella. Um, we have um, Marlon D, who's a rapper, originally from Oxnard, but he's now living in San Diego, and also um, singer-songwriter Jules King, and we do have a lot of raffle prices. Um, we have a Miss Universe kit that um, um, Olivia Quito Co. and Cindy Villaverde of O Skin Care is raffling off. And we have Japangelis, um, Little Tokyo's very own Japangelis, this um, streetwear, um, activewear, um, and also Rocket. Um, yeah, um, and we have like 16 more prices so yeah so if you have a chance everybody it's free admission it's two dollars um a raffle ticket and it's really a fundraiser for the filipino american chamber of commerce of hollywood and their advocacy just like everyone else is to help the artist community the filipino american artist community writers editors directors producers artists singers musicians and arts practitioners like all of us um, yeah, so that's happening tomorrow. Oh my gosh, I am so excited. It's like 8 o'clock p.m. to 12 midnight. We have four artists. Um, everyone's going to be there. The who's who of L.A. is going to be there. Like the SoCal Pinoy's group, SoCal groups, SoCal Philam groups, like some members from the Chambers of Commerce and other community organizations are going to be there. So it's almost like a networking social thing happening tomorrow at eight o'clock and next week oh my gosh next week it's it's actually father's day two two weeks from now right um and we have a very special special father's day special because arvin kuya ed and dennis diaz are performing um yeah their own set so we're gonna do be doing like a decades thing so someone's gonna be performing 60s songs 70s 80s 90s and you can just guess who among them are doing songs from what decade um and then on friday we have a very special guest um she's an opm legend um she's an opm singer from the 80s we have no other than Ivy Violan on our show on Friday. So that's something really, really special that you guys should look out for. Um, yeah, so that's next week. Um, but tomorrow, 8 o'clock at the Noi Pits in Little Tokyo, downtown Los Angeles. So thank you to all of our guest panelists and to all of our viewers on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Kumu. And so like for Kumu, I know we have some viewers from the Philippines. Thank you so much for sticking with us and congratulations to all of our raffle winners. Um, and you'll hear from me in a little bit. Um, yeah, so have a great weekend, everybody. But first, have a great Friday and see you tomorrow at the Noi Bits in Little Tokyo. Bye. Bye, everyone. Happy birthday, Happy birthday. 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 Thank you. <laughs> And happy, happy birthday. birthday to me also. <laughs> Coming up soon. <laughs> For the oh, Gemini too. <laughs> yes. Bye. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. How does one go from this to this? Or from this to this?
Real people, real transformation. Amazing life-changing results are achieved every day at O Skin Med Spa. Let Miss O show you the way. Your very own before and after experience awaits. Call now for a free consultation. Visit oskinmedspa.com for more details.